Hello folks and goats, my name is Griffin and welcome to the Command Valley. As you know, we strive to give you the best EDH content and with that comes the new Commander Legends Pre-Condex Upgrade Guides. Before we go into this video, I just want to remind you that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by Game Grid. If you are looking to get any cards for your decks or any cards that are listed in the video today, then head on over to Game Grid's website in the description box below. You will be able to take a copy and pasteable list of the cards in this video right to their deck builder toolkit and get them shipped directly to your house. And if you are looking for a direct way to support the podcast, then head on over to patreon.com slash command valley. Check out all of our awesome perks and consider joining today. Yesterday, Lana treated you to an upgrade guide to the Reap the Tide Commander Legends Precon deck featuring AC Tyrant of Gyre Straight. But today, we're going to be doing an upgrade guide for Arm for Battle, headed by Wyleth Soul of Steel, the Commander Legends Precon deck coming out in Commander Legends. Now, if you are looking to get these decks also, Game Grid will be selling these on their website, so make sure that you stay tuned on their website so that you can get them shipped right to your house. 20 bucks a piece, guys. The best prices you'll find. Now, who is Wyleth and what is this deck about? Wyleth Soul of Steel is one red-white for a 2-2 legendary creature human warrior. He has trample and whenever Wyleth Soul of Steel attacks, draw a card for each aura and equipment attached to it. If you guys are a fan of Boros, and even if you're not, you know this is an absolute powerhouse. One of the weaknesses of Voltron strategies is they tend to run out of cards, and it's really hard to fit in card draw along with your equipments and your enchantments, and it can sometimes be really tough to get it all going together to make this perfect Voltron engine. Wyleth, however, brings all of those pieces together and says, you want to play artifacts and equipments? Well, we're going to reward you for that on the commander. So in the precon deck, it is focused around all these cheap artifacts and equipments to attach to Wyleth, a lot of payoffs that you get from casting and equipping artifacts, and then some ways of being able to recur and move around your equipments with a little bit of style. In this video, I will be giving you 10 cards for $10 that you can switch out for the Wyleth deck to make it just that much more powerful than it already is, because it's kind of absurd. But if you have $10 on the side after buying one of these decks, and consider getting these cards. Now, of course, since we have 10 cards in, we need to take 10 cards out. So I'll start with those. So the 10 cards that we will be taking out of this deck are Expedite, Wild Ricochet, Bone Splitter, Abrade, Core Cartographer, Explorer Scope, Volcanic Fallout, Winds of Wrath, a Transguild Promenade, and an Evolving Wilds. Now, I won't go into detail into exactly why these should be taken out, because again, it's your personal choice which things you want to keep in. I just found that these cards were subpar in the deck. Immediately, these were the cards that I thought we could switch out. So let's go into the cards that we're going to be putting into this deck. The first one being Silent Arbiter. For 4 generic, we have a 1-5 artifact creature that says no more than one creature can attack each combat, and no more than one creature can block each combat. This is very effective in this deck because we only have one creature that we're really looking to attack with, and that's Wyleth. So we can make sure that we can swing in, and our opponents can only block with one creature. Since he only has trample, you can be sure that you're going to get a lot of damage through very, very quickly by only letting them block with one creature. Our second creature that we've swapped out is Stone Hewer Giant for 3 white white. We have a 4 4 giant warrior with vigilance and an ability that says 1 and a white tap, search your library for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield. Attach it to a creature you control and shuffle your library. Stone Hewer Giant is a fort in these kind of decks, being able to get it out pretty early and start tutoring equipments right onto the battlefield and attach it to Wyleth means that you can get some very powerful plays out of nowhere considering it doesn't actually require it to be done at sorcery speed so you have a lot of flexibility at when you can do this and what kind of abilities you can get off of it. There is also a Sun Forger in this deck which just gives a lot of potential especially with the Stone Cure Giant. Coming in third we have one of my favorite six drops in white it's sun titan for four white white we have a six six giant with vigilance and whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks you may return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield now the reason why i really like sun titan in this deck is another downside to playing a lot of voltron s strategies is if somebody tends to board wipe artifacts and enchantments you're kind of host there's not a lot of things you can do so it's very important to play a lot of recursion and sun titan is a perfect inclusion to get that recursion along with all 
all of the all of the equipments and most of the enchantments that we have in here are three mana or less means we can start recurring those back to the battlefield repeatedly coming on our two sorceries the first one is open the armory one in a white for a sorcery search your library for an aura or equipment card reveal it put it into your hand and shuffle your library Again, with the stone hero giant, it's very important to get tutors specifically for the equipment that you want, especially if you have more of a budget for larger equipment such as the swords. Maybe you're looking for sort of the animus, a shadow spear, like all of these cards are very expensive, but open the armor, you can get anything from your deck. If I could recommend something to grab from the precon deck itself, it would be something like Swiftfoot Boots, which can give it hexproof, which is probably the most important thing that we need for Wyleth. Coming in number five, we have Divine Reckoning. For two white white, we have a sorcery. Each player chooses a creature he or she controls and destroy the rest. And you can also flash it back for five white white. Now there was a board wipe in this deck already that we did take out in Winds of Wrath. However, I didn't like Winds of Wrath because it destroyed all creatures that weren't enchanted. There, there are several enchantments in this deck, but I want to have a board wipe that is always gonna be on our side. Divine Reckoning and allowing us to choose Wyleth and then destroying all other creatures besides the ones our opponents choose means that we're going to be left on top with our massive Wyleth stacked with a bunch of equipments and enchantments. And it's really just a plus that you can flash it back later in the game. Coming in number six, one of my favorite equipments, it's Colossus Hammer. For one generic, we have a equipment that equips for eight. An equipped creature gets plus 10, plus 10, and loses flying. Now, the only reason I really like this in this deck is because in Wyleth, we have a lot of ways of abusing that equip ability. Even with the Stone Hewer Giant, which can just make it equipped for free. And we have a couple of other ways in the deck of equipping things for free, which means a Colossus Hammer can sometimes just be one generic mana, give your creature plus 10, plus 10. With Wyleth, plus 10, plus 10 and Trample means you could potentially wipe out somebody in one go. Coming in 7th and 8th, these ones are very similar. It's Trail, Blazer's Boots, and Prowler's Helm. They are both two generic artifact equipments that you can equip for two. Prowler's Helm, which says that your creature cannot be blocked except by walls, and Trailblazer's Boots that gives your creature non-basic island walk. And now these are just effects that make Wyleth very hard to block and make sure that we can get in for a lot of damage, take out our opponents with commander damage very early in the game, and can definitely be something that you tutor up with an Open the Armory or a Stone Hewer Giant. Coming in, number nine is actually a new card that's come out in Commander Legends in the main set. It's Arden, Intrepid Archaeologist. For two and a white, we have a 2-2 Legendary Creature Core Scout. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to target, permanent, or player. He also has partner if you want to make him a commander in your own decks. Extremely strong, especially if somebody managed to get rid of our Wyleth. But we have an Ardenet on the battlefield. We can recast Wyleth and on combat just reattach everything to Wyleth. Now this cheats out the mana that we would need to equip it ourselves. That is very, very powerful and is a very, very good include into this deck. And I highly recommend that if you do get this deck that you pick up Arden Intrepid Archaeologist. Now coming in last is probably my favorite card that you can include in this deck. It's actually an enchantment and not an equipment, but that is Gift of Immortality. For two and a white, we have an enchantment aura, enchant creature. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. Now this can be very powerful when our opponents are removing Wyleth with a Gift of Immortality. Wyleth will come back immediately, meaning that your opponents have to use two resources, whether it be two kill spells, they have to board wipe twice, whatever it may be, but the Gift of Immortality will just come back at the end step, slap back onto Wyleth, and you can keep going with your Voltron strategy. All of these 10 cards right now, you can get for $10, which means it's a $10 upgrade that will make your deck just that much better. But to be honest, this deck is very powerful from the beginning. I very much highly recommend that you get this deck. It seems like a lot of fun and probably the best Boros Voltron strategy that we have seen since Akiri herself. If you have any other betcha recommendations or good cards that would fit into this deck, then feel free to comment them in the section below. It helps other people build their decks, and it's really nice to have a community that shares their ideas together, and we really appreciate it. If you'd like to jump onto our Discord and talk about these cards as they're being spoiled, or bring decks around all the partners coming out in Commander Legends, then consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to get access to our Discord and join the conversation. Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe and check out all of our other content considering our deck techs and our gameplay videos and podcast episodes that you may enjoy. Last but not least, we stream Brawl every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So join us at twitch.tv slash command valley, talk about the new cards and have a great time doing it. All right, friends, thanks so much for joining and we'll see you on the next video.